specifically in the hard times where she was living in. Clearly, Etty Hillerson was very interested in Christianity, and particularly Catholicism, as many, many people of her generation were. I certainly had a, a great uncle who equally was fascinated by Catholicism, got lots of his letters, he also perished. It was common. I mean, it was common in Britain for people who were Jewish and were fairly assimilated as Jews to also be interested in Christianity. Mm. And I think the important thing is that, you know, in the end, she ended up working for the Jewish Council and threw her lot in with the Jews. I mean, she didn't have a great deal of choice, although she did have points where she might have been able to escape and decided not to, and she decided to share the destiny. I think the other thing that's important is that sometimes the Catholic Church has tried to claim people who were Jews. There's a particular issue with Edith Stein, who was claimed as a, a, a Catholic, uh, essentially a saint. And uh, I do find that rather difficult because Edith Stein didn't die because she was a Catholic. Mm. She died because she was, by heredity anyway, mm. if not by practice or by belief, she was a Jew. I think you've got to be very careful about how you describe what went on in Holland. First of all, Amsterdam was a very Jewish city. It was referred to as Makom, originally Hamakom, which means place, the place in Hebrew. Even in football crowds, when people were cheering for Amsterdam, they used to cheer Makom Makom. So it was very, very much a Jewish place. Secondly, a lot of people, Etty Hillison included, were very, very assimilated Jews. They didn't really think of themselves hugely as Jewish. They certainly weren't practicing Jews. And I When you look at the extent of collaboration with the Nazis amongst European countries, Holland, contrary to impressions people have, actually comes quite high for collaboration. And the Jews had a pretty rough time. The number of collaboration. In this house, Etty Ellison wrote her diaries, 1941-1942. This is the house where she came in and came out every day, looking out over the museum plan and Concertgebouw and Rijksmuseum. Her room is up there, the second one up. And there are many pictures taken where she is sitting in her room because the son of her lover was a good photographer. So there are a few pictures from her sitting there. One of the pictures is on the cover of many books in many translations. And the community of Amsterdam has given a sort of sign any, on her, her house. Any, any greenery, any parkland, any, any tree, yeah. three, 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 three trees she, together, yeah. she says, Jews were not permitted. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's true. Her. They were completely out of any touch with the nature. They couldn't go out of town, they couldn't go out of their, almost, out of their houses at the end. 3rd of March 1942, Tuesday evening 9pm. We are not allowed to walk along the promenade any longer, and every miserable little clump of two or three trees has been pronounced a wood with a board nailed up. No admittance to dues. More and more of these boards are appearing all over the place. Nevertheless, there is still enough room for one to move and live and be happy and play music and love each other. The Hillersom household was quite a cultured family on all accounts. The younger brother...